Um, as, as I announced before, um, um, it's always great to have a sort of a discussion, and uh, we are very glad to have um, three experts on their fields in different aspects of value-based uh, healthcare. Um, they already you see that they are they are eager to start the panel. That's that's great. So that's uh, that, that's a good sign. Sjoerd um, Nijhoff, Reskin Veenstra, and Lindra Kloppert. I I asked them be, uh, before if you if. They wanted, to, well, I didn't ask them actually. I said, I, uh, I'm not going to introduce uh, you. You're going to introduce yourself because that's easier. But I'm very strict on time, as you already know a little bit. So I gave them 30 sec seconds pitch to say who they are and why they are uh, here for value based healthcare. Shall we just start uh, here? Ninetta, go ahead. There's a the microphone. Yeah, that's important to give the microphone to the others. Otherwise, people online won't uh, hear you. Go ahead. Great, thank you, Hendrik. My name is Lynetta Koppert. I work as an associate professor in surgical oncology at the Erasmus MC, treating patients with thyroid cancer and breast cancer. And breast cancer is my research. And 10 years ago, I started value-based healthcare in the uh, consultation room. Now I'm also PI International Value-Based Healthcare. I'm very compassionate about value-based healthcare. It's perfectly within the 30 seconds, great. <laughs> Are you also on the OR like that? When you say 30 seconds, 30 seconds? Wow, that's, she's probably the only surgeon who is in time. <laughs> Go ahead, Renske. Uh, well, uh, I studied uh, on breast cancer research for the Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm a health scientist uh, from nature, but uh, rolled into the data part, so more an IT professionalist uh, these days. And why value-based healthcare? Because of my personal inspirations of Florence Nightingale. Um, she has my heart, but she also two decades ago noticed how difficult it was to get good data. We still have that problem, and that's why it's my mission to get better data to uh, accelerate value-based healthcare initiatives. So that's great. Well, I already have a question for you Alf, in, a, in, in a minute. But first, uh, Sjoerd, go ahead, Sjoerd. Uh, I'm Sjoerd Nielf. I'm a clinical physicist, so I have a, a technical background. Uh, I worked uh, at the Maastad Hospital in Rotterdam, and together we have a collaboration that's called Santion. That's our seven hospitals within the Netherlands. And within this collaboration, there was a, a bit of a problem with value-based healthcare and uh, really scaling value-based healthcare. And I was uh, a little bit... Uh, I thought, well, maybe we can solve the problem. So I talked to Renske and said, let's uh, develop a platform called Health Intelligent Platform Santion. And we did. We just started. And uh, yeah, it's working a little bit now. So that's, my, uh, that's why I'm here. So if you want to have a quick fix, just grab these two guys, because apparently yeah. they, they can do we'll it. Fix it. <laughs> we'll fix it. <laughs> OK. Um, it, it looks like a simple question, but it can be also a difficult question or a difficult answer. Um, what should we do now to improve our data collection, uh, exchange, automation? Who wants to, you, you start us with that you are so happy about data collection. <laughs> so you should start uh, probably. I'm still happy, but it's very difficult. Uh, and I, was, uh, I always say, let's work together on uh, things like data availability, data quality and standardization of data. Uh, and work together on it, because uh, it's not helpful if I'm only working on it or uh, you're working on it. Uh, but if we work together uh, and we use the same standards and we use the same systems and processes to get better data quality and availability, then we can also work together uh, in value-based healthcare initiatives, and that will help scaling up those uh, beautiful initiatives we talked to today. Uh, so um, the better we get started working together on uh, those items, I think. And how did you do that? Because you're already working together. How, how does it work? For me, uh, one of the main points is that you should really involve the people that are taking care of the patients. So uh, the nurses, the doctors should be involved. And I noticed that when you provide them with uh, data that shows how well they're doing compared to others, they always want to do better, and that's the way it works. And then people get competitive, and uh, uh, using their data, they really get enthusiastic, and they ask for more. And they ask for more data, they ask for more solutions, and that's the way we work now. And it really is uh, fun to see that people really enjoy working like this. So that's, that's my main point. It's not the techniques. It's, it's important, very important, uh, it's difficult, etc. But it's people that want to do it. And if you uh, have that, then you can really run. Okay. Lynetta, I know you're 
uh, you're saying that it's important to motivate the, the healthcare providers, but I think you have another point of view, or not, not another, a different uh, well, maybe somewhat maybe. different from a different angle, maybe, but, but not completely different since it is about data. And mm -hmm. there's such an enormous amount of data within healthcare that's not properly used right now and that's not properly unlocked, not leveraged. And that's really a problem. So working in this, all these silos with data. And um, I'm frustrated about it since we, don't, we do not get the insights we need from the data. Not we as healthcare providers, not the patients, but also not researchers and also not policy makers. So I'm frustrated there. And why, um, well, this, this siloing should be taken away from us in order to give back data to patients, as Stuart says. So to have patients in the driver's seat, and that's really what we need also within the healthcare systems. There's scarcity of personnel. We, we need patients to be in the driver's seat if they are, well, they have the capacity to do that, of course. So we should inform them, give them data, and also maybe a view in like aggregated data on other patients like them in a dashboard, ideally, to see how do I do? How do I perform right now today as compared to people like me? That would be really, that's what we need. I think that's what we need now, actually. Because you work a lot with PROMS and PREMS, patient reported outcome measures. Uh, does it mean that you advocate that these should be available to all the patients? Yes. Yeah. You, you know that's a very dangerous statement, huh? Yeah. As, as a yeah. <laughs> so surgical that oncologist. That needs some explanation. Yes. So not per se only a quality of life questionnaire data, but linked to the clinical data. And it should be discussed, I think, with the healthcare providers. So we should be in the lead to have a discussion on outcomes with our patients. And uh, one of the nominees was uh, from Leuven telling that compliance went up when there is this conversation in the outpatient clinic, of course. That sounds logical, but we should. And I think in the discussion going coming minutes, we should talk about that kind of behavioral change. Yeah. We should do that. We should take our responsibility there. Yeah. And that's a behavioral change from the healthcare providers, but does it also mean a behavioral change for the patients? Yes. Yeah. And can and you explain a little bit more on yeah, that? Yeah, also that needs some explanation. Then we should give the right information, isn't it? Not only just throwing the data to them, but kind of help them to, uh, well, to, to understand what the data tell them. Yeah. So I understand you will work more together, work more with the patients. I love the presentation of uh, uh, this, more, uh, this earlier th today when it said it's, uh, we are the partners of the patients and not the other way around. Does it feel like that? Yeah, I think that's very important to emphasize, but it's not only patients and healthcare providers. Also, IT professionalists should work uh, in other ways. It's not about, I give you the technology and you can use it, or throwing the data, as Lynetta just uh, said. Um, it's about uh, giving them meaningful data, which they can really use, and that's therefore is uh, something that we work on together. So it's the medical uh, specialists, the nurses, the patients, but also IT specialists, and, and that should be in one room to discuss on how we get the best data. It's not about getting a lot of data, uh, it's about getting getting valuable data and valuable data is you can only get when you work together uh, with the patients and physicians um, so that should be uh, yeah like working one team so it's not separate worlds and also changing that and also giving uh, the change management side I don't like it wor the word but uh, <laughs> um, from a change management perspective it's also important to give them the tools facilitating them it's not giving them a new technique or a new technology or we want to do value-based healthcare you need to give them the story of value-based healthcare and IT specialists need to know what is value-based healthcare you need to teach them and you need to take a physician this is the IT system and this is how it works and this is how you get valuable data um, and that's something we need to work to, uh, on together C can I ask a question? Do you also have patients in these discussions? When yeah, you we say have. we were have to work together, have a patient advocate? Or yeah, exactly. So you, you already invited Hannah, uh, for instance, or 
with <laughs> her colleague in the Netherlands. Uh, within every uh, value-based healthcare, uh, um, uh, we have collaboration with patients. We ask them, what do you want? What do you need? Uh, uh, and we really look to that. Then and on the outcome, we have patient reported outcomes in dashboards. So we provide, for example, for kidney patients, we really provide a dashboard where they can see what is my outcome compared to the group, for example, from other central hospitals. We really worked hard on that, and, and also in rheumatology we did that. And that really works, because then uh, people can look at their own data, like you said, it's very important, and have a, a, a grasp of what, what, it, what that data means, because that's very uh, difficult for a lot of patients, and also for me sometimes, to just see what is the re reported outcomes compared to and that works, so I think that's important. And what I notice is that uh, what we keep forgetting is that it's not only the patients, it's the system surrounding the patient. So the family, for example, uh, also wants to have access to that data because they can help the patient actually uh, uh, interpret the data and do the right things. So uh, it's the whole system that you need to uh, incorporate. That's why it's difficult, I think, but it's doable. I, I can see you nodding. You're you are, uh, a, a clinician, so, so you, you you meet the patient, you talk to the patient. That's what your dream is for in a couple of years? Yeah, well, <coughs> actually three years ago, it was one of my young breast cancer patients coming to see me after a year of treatment. And I thought, oh, why she wants to see me right now? Is there something wrong? And then she said, I want to talk with you from my kind of profession. I'm a UX web designer myself, and I'm designing so many apps for companies but you should have one also to guide me through the process. That would be helpful, isn't it? Since you give me so much information, it's too much. So you should help me. And then she offered kind of as a present, a, a kind of prototype of a patient journey with information, um, how it should look like. And I took her to my CEO and said, you should listen to her. She has the story on how we should go create together in healthcare. And actually now three years yet later, she's the lead design in my institute creating this app and we have it now and it was kind of a co-creation with the patient and I think that's the reason that it's successful. It came out of someone being within healthcare and having needs and that's a beautiful example. I think also you have your examples in your hospital and we should do this together with patients. Yeah, yeah. A, a true partnership. Yeah, that was actually what was, I know already the answer, I was, my, my next question would be what is the most impactful IT implementation you, you saw in value-based healthcare, but you already yeah. said it probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there's also another one. Um, I think what's the most important um, thing we achieved um, in my institute, I'm really grateful to work with a, a system that, that really supports me. So the, um, for example, the patient reported outcomes are within the electronic patient file where they should be, and they're an important element in the daily care. So the questionnaires are sent out automatically when patients have an appointment and there's already a DBC, DBC or DRG code, then they will get that specific set of questionnaires already automated, that's really great. And also when they filled in the PROs, I can see them immediately within the electronic patient file, as it should be, I think. But that's a really uh, an achievement where we are efficient in the systems and we gather so much data now. Um, and, and well, I think that's, that's also the one I want to mention here. Yeah. Great, great example, thank you so much. Renske, what would be your, your most valuable um, or impactful IT implementation from the point of view of value-based healthcare, of course? Value-based healthcare, yeah. Well, I think IT systems, and we have seen a lot of uh, great examples, um, which are really facilitating value-based healthcare, are for me the most valuable. Uh, and if I, um, yeah, well, of course, I'm very proud of uh, the initiatives we have in Sancion, uh, but also uh, I really am inspired by initiatives. Uh, I was for a couple of weeks ago, I was in Canada uh, for the Values Healthcare of the America Summit. Um, it really inspired me because we can see that on the other side of the ocean, we're working on the same things. So can we work together on uh, getting a more globally uh, uh, movement in which we can also exchange technology? Uh, and we know beautiful uh, innovations uh, in the Nordics, but also in Singapore. Um, so there, are, there is a lot. What we need to do is think, I think the best IT innovation will come, uh, and that is that we are bringing that uh, together. 
Uh, and I think that's uh, what we are trying to do now uh, in the Netherlands, also with the initiative Lynette I was talking about, and also the initiatives in Santion and also other hospitals, in working together on getting those technologies, um, uh, yeah, getting the building blocks of those technologies together in order to get a, a Dutch network uh, so we can uh, get more, uh, we can use each other's uh, innovations more easily. And, and what is the hurdle? For not having it yet, uh, because Money, uh, it, uh, uh, no, I don't think not it's in uh, my backyard. <laughs> if you not ask me, <laughs> yeah, it's not in my backyard. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's give, not giving away uh, the things you are proud of. Uh, we talk about, uh, yeah, you can use my app, but um, you can also use my technology. Should be the next thing uh, you say. Uh, you can use uh, my uh, standardization processes. You can use my uh, learning programs. It's not about only the giving the app or the technology or the data, it's about the whole package and giving it away means also giving away control so and that somebody else can use it. And I think it's something in your own mindset uh, to give something away. You cherish it like your baby and you don't want to give it away because you don't know what somebody else is going to do with it. But that's really necessary uh, to get uh, a more, uh, yeah, uh, get it more uh, spread out um, uh, in the Netherlands and uh, also further than that. Yeah. Sure, do you have an example of the, 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 the best IT implementation uh, you saw last couple of years? Yeah, I have. It, it, it's not an IT implementation. I think it's the collaboration. Uh, so uh, what you need to do, uh, I said it before, is I don't think it's the systems. It's, it's really not. It's just the informal collaboration you have where you start with, that you see each other, talk to each other, are enthusiastic about all the solutions that are presented here today. I heard a couple of what I thought, oh, maybe we should talk to them uh, about uh, can we proudly copy from. Uh, uh, that's what you mentioned earlier. Uh, and I think if we do that and then formalize that, uh, to formalize the collaboration uh, and, and have really have a discussion about what you said, that uh, uh, it's my baby. Uh, I want to take care of it. It, it, needs to be, it needs to grow, but you know, yeah, like, like my children are 15 years old, they walk away and come back. They walk away and come back and they walk further and further and further. And that's the way it should be with these type of systems. So you really should adhere that and be proud of what you did, but also make good uh, appointments and know each other to implement each other's ideas. Be proud of that. Uh, don't try to invent everything yourself. Yeah. Nineveh, you want to I want add to something add to that? Something. Yeah, yeah, that's for, okay for with you. Yeah. <laughs> All about collaboration. I think we mentioned the word 20 times or so now the last 20 minutes. Um, I'm also very happy to have European collaboration on a nice initiative. It's also on the slide. It's called H2O, Health Outcomes Observatories. And it exactly does what I think we talk about. So kind of make an ecosystem on data where we um, make appointments on what we do um, as outcome set, so a standardized outcome set for a particular disease, and then collect data, clinician clinical data, as well as patient reported data, and then give aggregated data back to patients in a dashboard. That's what we strive for within this project. And it's really, it's a public-private consortium that's really great collaboration, there's the word again, and it makes us stronger. So in the Netherlands, I think we find each other already quite good and we like to collaborate but also there's Europe and maybe wider than Europe you went to Canada we should do this really together and go into this together that's really challenging and and, and so nice to do yeah. yeah well we saw earlier on that in, in rare diseases apparently it's it's more easy than in more common diseases yeah. it, it's, is there a reason you know where, where are you Ruben are you still here why yeah. is it so easy with uh, rare disease the collaboration uh, sorry, uh, do you have an extra microphone? Because otherwise the online... Uh... Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I would not dare to say that it's easy, uh, but I think in rare diseases, because there are so uh, little patients, the patients are scattered throughout the world. So if you want to achieve consensus amongst... Uh, more than uh, 20 patients, we need to look across our borders. So it's just an example, I think. Okay. So maybe it's easy, maybe not easy. Oh, Renska. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You. 
Well, it's not about only uh, surrounding the disease and getting, uh, especially from an IT perspective, we need to stop focusing on a specific disease or a specific goal because we only get point-to-point -point solutions. And if we talk about scalability and not having uh, to get through an, uh, yet another IT project and yet another uh, data project, we need to standardize our core. Uh, data and use it for more than one solution. So not building the solution from point to point, uh, but make sure you got a good foundation of data which is standardized as in uh, order to get all those applications uh, uh, a good use. Uh, and then it will be easier to make use of each other's uh, accomplishments. Okay. Stuart, you wanted to add something? Yeah, it's more more of a... I think it's a network thing. Uh, if you have a rare disease, then, uh, for example, in my hospital, a rare disease, maybe one or two people are uh, involved with that. And because of that, then it's more easy to collaborate because if you collaborate with other hospitals, then you have 10 people you have to collaborate with. That's different from collaborating with 100 people. So your network size also determines how difficult it is to be successful. Okay. Uh, and We've got some, a couple of minutes to talk about the, the last question I wanted to ask you, and it's no, not a personal one, but it's what, what was for you the biggest learning in, in all the thing about using technology and data for uh, collecting, exchanging, working together? Now, Shurt is smiling already. He wants, yeah, he wants to answer yeah, a quick yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You will get to <laughs> the time as well. Uh, the biggest to learning. Dare to, dare to lead and dream. And uh, Rensk is going to be uh, really angry after this talk because I'm going to say it. It's real-time value-based healthcare is my dream. Uh, so that's uh, something where you collect the data from the patient, you have it uh, readily available at your desk when you're talking to a patient, and you uh, look at the data with the patient together in the dashboard uh, and seeing data from other patients that have similar disease, uh, similar and then you look at the outcomes and you have a real discussion with the patient when we provide this type of care, this can be your outcome. And that's, that's a long way, I think, uh, a couple of years, but we're getting there and that will be really helpful in this way. Just to dare to lead and say things that Rens could say, oh my God, really. <laughs> Technical, I, I, very difficult. I see you nodding, uh, Lineta. Yeah, yeah, dare to dream. Yeah, yeah. I think three words. It's uh, co-creation with patients. It's behavioral change for the healthcare professional also, and that's an important topic. And it's uh, collaboration. <laughs> there he is again. But uh, I think I want to tell practice what you preach. Since Renske talks about collaboration, but she's doing it already uh, very much since we're together in an initiative where we um, decided to collect patient-reported outcome data of breast cancer patients in as many uh, initiatives in the Netherlands as we have, but particularly at the Sentian Hospitals and at the Erasmus, where I work with two other hospitals, we're trying to practice what we preach and bring together all these data, since when we do it by ourselves, we have not enough data to make good dashboards, as Sjord is dreaming of, and I'm also. Um, so we should collaborate to have more data and to learn from the data and give the data back. So um, I'm, I'm really grateful to be in this with Renske, and I think uh, this is practice what you preach. We should do this. And I decided to, beca to become a nominee next year, actually, uh, Renske, on that part. Isn't that a good idea? <laughs> okay. Well, this is, um, I think it's a, it's a good conclusion of... Uh, this panel, and uh, yeah, as you imagine, we can uh, continue talking for hours and hours, but we still have a large program. I want to have a big applause for uh, the panel. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's, it's a great um, uh, pleasure to um, uh, not only introduce a person, but introduce a new award. That's something which doesn't happen very often. Um, but I'm going to introduce a new award, which is the Value-Based Health Care Thinkers Award. But I'm not going to give that.